shields for This is gonna be fun. I've been looking forward to fighting an M50 for a while in the Merlin. <laughs> The Merlin is a viper. Hundred <laughs> percent. In a kind of a weird way, it does a bit, look a bit like a viper. So, all right. It's the same size and everything too. Yeah. It looks like the uh, like like the Viper Mark. Uh, what Mark, was it? Mark two. Five. Oh, the Mark seven. Yeah. Yeah, the ones that the ones that were useless in the beginning. All right. See if this M50 wants to play with my little Merlin. Got uh, his shields down. He wanted to disengage here. He's a bit timid. Usually, what happens with a lot of these fights is like he'll. A lot of people will kind of dip their foot in, be like, "Hey, what's going to happen here?" And if they lose their shields and they lose the fight fast, they get real defensive real fast. So my plan is to knock his shields down, and then when he goes for the run, I, I close him with the ballistics. If he wants to play a little bit range game, but once his shields are down, it shouldn't be too long. There's the run. Yeah, so he's doing the disengage. So he's an M50, right? So he can outrun me. So he's just kind of dipping his foot in. He's losing his shields. He's getting scared, and then he and then he, and he flies away. So. Oh, he's got a lot of momentum on that one. As he comes ripping past. I'm just gonna keep my speed low. See what he see what he's up to. Another contact coming in. Yeah, Gladius. Oh, nice. I mean, if he opens fire on you, I'm fucking light him up. That's, that's all Get good. me closer to him. Okay, M50. Go, go. Third ship? There we go. Yeah, Quasi Star. Get me closer to him. Yeah, there's a third ship as well. Another Gladius. One sec, guys. One sec. Here we go. Ballistics now. Now he's going to try to go for the run. And I'm going to light him up with the ballistics. I see the Gladius too. Done. Nice. Blue up? Yep. Friendly. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we're good to go? Yep. Okay, touching off. Launch successful. You just let me know if they start attacking and I'll get back inside. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Who wants to fight fight the first Gladius here? I'm not sure what the other one's doing. Let's give him a buzz and see if he wants to play. Okay, so he wants to play. So again, into the corkscrew. There we go, into the J-hook. Uh, get a little closer here on him. Try to go for the slot. Watch the distance control. Almost got his shields down. Once I got his shields down, then I go for the ballistics. He's gonna go for the run. He's in trouble now. He wants to keep range on me. As long as I keep a couple hits on him. Go. Losing my target underneath the nose. Come on, come on. Target Alright, so overall, two pretty damn good fights with um, the M50 and the Gladius. And I kind of just want to go over some key points during the first and second fight to give you guys a little bit more of a an idea of some stuff some tips right so this fight right here I wanna go over uh, I guess you could say like defense prediction or when he's gonna go defensive because the the proper the proper catching of this m50 when he was deciding to go defensive 
is the is, is what gave me enough time on target here to get the kill so where at what point did I notice that was the case so during the beginning of this fight we had noticed the M50 going really defensive as soon as its shields were down and as soon as I put him in a defensive position or a position where it really wasn't that advantageous so let's back that up and let's kinda go through the thought process here in slow motion so here we go we've got him in the turn fight again my wings are nice and level so as I'm pulling up around the corner, I'm always pulling my nose up onto the target, right? He's a little bit out of position on his M50. He's fighting a little bit in yaw, so he's going to slide a bit more than I am, so my circle is going to be nice and tight. So here we have the target time we're looking for. He's obviously fallen out of the position that he wants to be in, and he's slowly pulling himself back on. I'm squeezing the trigger, just use my size 1 guns. I'm not opening up my ballistics just yet because I'm waiting for the shields to go down. Here we go, shields are down, ballistics start coming out, boom, we've got the damage in. And right here, right here, you see the speed limiter jacks up all the way and as soon as he apexes that turn, I'm already under full boost right now. So we're both of us accelerating at essentially the same time. The Merlin has just enough acceleration to stay with the M50 because all I need to do is stay within 800 meters. You'll notice that I'm pulling my nose up onto the target as I chase him into this turn. As I'm chasing him, I'm lining my wings up. You can see his flight pattern by the blue marker and I'm using my bottom thrusters with a little bit of upstrafe to keep myself pulling, pulling, pulling around the corner as I push, push, push towards the target. This is the last chance I'm going to have because he's going to set up for his next turn, which I have not pre-turned on because I want to close the distance. So this is the last chance I'm going to have to get damage on target before I lose him. If I wanted to stay with him, I would have had to pre-turn. But because I didn't pre-turn because I wanted to close the distance, this is the last chance I get. And there's the kill. So the second fight goes pretty, pretty standard for, I guess you could say, fights. But again, I want to talk about what's called less is more. You'll notice that the connection between these movement patterns that I'm making, I'm not making large movements. I'm doing these simple S turns and J hooks, which again are videos that you can watch on the channel. And I'm not creating a lot of deflection, but I'm creating fast connections between the small deflections I'm doing. I don't need to create big, long sweeping deflections as I slowly work my way towards the target. And then once I have a spot on the target that I like, I continue to keep and stay on the position that I want. Having a higher turn rate on the Merlin gives you a big advantage in that sense that you want to stay close and tight up onto your target. But the trick here is not getting over overzealous with your movement or getting scared to kind of face off against your target. He's having enough trouble as it is hitting you. The more energy you do, the more smooth your flight pattern becomes in that sense, the much easier it is to hit the target. But where did this Gladius make his cardinal mistake? Well, let's back that up. From the very beginning, this Gladius was trying to get into basically a turn fight with a with a, a Merlin at the optimal range that the Merlin is the best at. So right here, he's continuing to pull his nose up while strafing, but he's not strafing up hard enough, and he's not realizing that I'm underneath his turn rate. I've won the turn fight already. So finally he gets the distance he needs because again once he's fallen out of the distance he's got some time to shoot and I've noticed that he's got some time to shoot so I start to slowly work my way back around him again throwing my power into my shields there to get the shields back up and I'm, I'm continuing to rotate around him and what he does is he makes the mistake of giving me his back as he's trying to, uh, to, to spin me around but losing track of your target letting me get super close without actually letting like, like without separating your distance and then when I do have the distance on him here just continuing to do what's not working for him over and over and over again is really what is, is really what costs him the fight because the range that he's currently at now is the range that he should be trying to stay at but every time he lets me get the distance on him and he's not using his up strafe hard enough Again, we see my like we see working around the angle here. He's a bit confused. You can see him over rolling, not sure what he should do in this situation, and he's lost me again. Now he doesn't even know where I am. I'm back on top of him, and he's deciding, well, I need to get out of here, so I'm going to try and disengage. And he's taking shot after shot after shot. His shields are down. I'm still staying with him, which will eventually lead to him getting shot down. So when it 
when it comes to fighting people in the PU, guys, you got to know your distances, like know your ranges, okay? And know that if you're in a bad spot, it's there's nothing wrong with getting out of a bad spot. If you're in a bad spot that you know you're not at the advantage of, there's nothing wrong with using those main thrusters to pull yourself through the fight. But what you want to avoid is you want to avoid giving me your back as you try to run away, unless you have the distance where giving me your back is going to be relatively safe. That pretty much brings it to the end of the video, guys. Two pretty damn good fights from, from, from two pretty good pilots. So it was a really, it was a lot of fun. I don't think a lot of people out there really know how to fight the Merlin because the Merlin, in my opinion, is once you understand the basics of your flight combat, the Merlin is quite easy to take out and it really doesn't have a lot of shields. But if you're struggling with some of the basics, the Merlin can be an absolute nightmare. Fast, small, nimble, very hard to hit. It's just a slow million cuts to death. I hope this guy was informative, guys. I hope you learned something. The Merlin out there flies pretty nice. It would be nice to have two size two guns on it, but who knows? It might even be overpowered at that point. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for all the support, guys, in the stream and uh, on the channel. I hope you guys love the content, and I'll see you all in the next video.